have been some developments in this case since the last time I talked about it. You may have read that the criminal charges against Alice Evans have been dismissed. Now, there is no doubt that this is a very fortunate development for her, but she is still in a world of hurt in her child custody dispute for reasons that we're going to get into, but they all come back to this domestic violence restraining order. So I told you last time we were going to look at the reasons why the judge signed this order in the first place. So let's take a look. Griffith filed a 14-page sworn declaration and about 75 pages of documents uh, as evidence supporting his request for a domestic violence restraining order. Obviously, there's a lot in there. We're not going to cover every single detail for a lot of reasons, but what I'm going to do is walk you through what some of the highlights are so that you can get the flavor of what substantiated the trial court's findings here that Alice Evans had committed harassment and or disturbing the peace of Yoan Griffith and Bianca Wallace. So the declaration starts with the timeline of the breakdown of the relationship. This is important because, as you're going to see in a few minutes, the timeline of his new relationship with Bianca Wallace plays a kind of important role in uh, some of Alice's communications uh, in this matter. So what Yohan Griffith tells us, again, remember this is under oath, is that he married Alice in August of 2007. They have two minor children together, a eight-year-old and 12-year-old daughters at this time. This is uh, in February of 2022. He told Alice that he was unhappy in their relationship in August of 2020. They began to discuss the possibility of separating According to Yohan, during this time period, Alice repeatedly told me that if I left her, she would make false public accusations about me, sell false stories about me to the press, and destroy me and my career. Alice told me verbally many times that she would do to me what Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp. Alice threatened to tell people I had abused her and our daughters. She threatened to call the police on me if I did not comply with her demands. She threatened to tell people I am a drug addict and put me in prison. She threatened to write a fake diary that reflected an abused victim and to have the diary published. And she threatened to destroy my mother. Alice told me she would win and everyone would believe her over me. On January 1st of 2021, uh, Yoan separated from Alice, and he formally moved out of the house on January 25th of 2021. This was then followed by his formal divorce filing in March of 2021. According to Yoan, he then began his new relationship with Bianca Wallace in June of 2021, so roughly three months after filing for divorce and six months after separating from Alice. Alice then found out about this relationship in late October of 2021, and her reaction to finding out is going to be documented in the evidence we are about to look at. The behavior that Yoan is pointing to in support of his request for the DVRO is all behavior Alice has engaged in since the time he filed for divorce. So he starts by submitting to the court pages and pages and pages of the text messages that Alice Evans sent him after he filed for divorce on March 1st and until he ultimately blocked her number. Uh, at the end of July of 2021. These are pages, pages, text after text after text, many of them uh, ranting as Alice herself characterizes them. Uh, but what really stands out about them is just the enormous amount of verbal and emotional abuse that is plain as day on the page as you read through them. And you see Alice with no response from Yuan for the most part, 
calling him names, condescending to him, demeaning him, insulting him, threatening him, blackmailing him, accusing him of all kinds of terrible things, uh, gaslighting him, shaming him, blame shifting on him, and triangulating him against everybody from their friends to his mother to other actors that he's worked with to his lawyer, his agents, his managers, his fans, and last but not least, very much his own daughters. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these text messages in this video, in part because there are simply way too many of them, uh, but also because there is a lot of stuff in here that is frankly disturbing just with respect to the attitude that is demonstrated towards the minor children. Um, we're going to see in future videos when I talk a little bit more about the, par the parental alienation component of this case uh, that there is an ongoing pattern of Alice wielding the children as weapons against Yoan. And given their age, 8 and 12 years old at this time, uh, th these are young girls. They don't need to have their business dragged out in public like this even if Alice uh, is herself perfectly willing to put all of this out there for public consumption. So I picked out a few of these emails just to share with you. They're ones that I found best illustrate kind of the pattern of, of behavior that, that you see uh, and that really sheds light on the dynamic in this relationship. So we start with this one where she is threatening to expose his legal communications with his lawyer on her Instagram account. Uh, publicity has been a weapon that Alice has wielded since the inception of this divorce. Uh, she's gone on multiple interviews. She wrote an article for the Daily Mail, and she has used her own social media platforms to tweet and post uh, incessantly about uh, her perception of herself as being wronged and basically accusing Yohan of deserting her, deserting the children, abandoning his family, uh, and basically just being a terrible, awful person. So in this email, uh, she's threatening him with that publicity, which is a theme that we will see ongoing throughout these. Uh, course, calls him names, calls him a pussy, uh, triangulates him against the lawyer because by this point, uh, Yohan is sending her harassing messages to his lawyer. And so she is using that uh, to kind of belittle and uh, demean him, suggest he's not really a man uh, if he wants to free himself from her verbal tirades. Threatens to write a book about his mother, a, a, a bad book, a, an exposing book, a book that's going to make her look hated, uh, and then goes on to suggest that uh, maybe, you know, if you wanted to handle this divorce the way I want to, this whole book would just go away. Oh, man, this is really an imprudent thing to put into writing because this is the textbook definition of blackmail, of ex threatening to expose private or embarrassing information in order to coerce somebody to behave in a way that you think that they should behave. And just going on to accuse him, blame him for everything terrible from having no empathy to having never loved her, uh, culminating in this, this beautiful piece of blame shifting and gaslighting here, this role reversal of as recently as last Christmas, okay, Christmas of 2020, when we're in the midst of the separation, when his mental abuse had started. That's right. Yohan telling his wife that he's done with their relationship and wants to separate, that is mental abuse, according to her. So it goes on to, again, trying to intimidate him, to 
suggest to him she's never going to back down. She is going to get her way. Resistance is futile. She will dedicate her life to fighting him and continuing to wield these threats of, I'm going to expose you publicly. Not just making the threat, but emphasizing that she knows this is what he doesn't want. He's a publicity shy actor. It's not good for him. That's why she's doing it, not because there's any other particular benefit for her to be gained from it. She does not like that he reports her communications to his lawyer. This is a constant grievance that she has. She complains about the money that it costs to deal with lawyer communications over and over again. She calls him names for doing it, belittles him for doing it, suggests he's not a man, uh, because he doesn't want her verbally abusing her, verbally abusing him. So he refers to it again as whining and, uh, you know, calling him a pussy for doing that, that type of thing. Uh, continuing with the blackmail. Now she's going to tell the world that he's a cocaine addict and, uh, she is threatening to triangulate him once again, against uh, former co-workers, people that he worked with on one of his projects. Does this remind you of anybody? I just have to say, I remember how many people backed up Amber Heard according to Amber Heard, but then once you actually got to trial and there was nobody there except the paid experts, kind of kind of got a little bit of that feel going on here. Uh, particularly when Alice didn't pony up any of this evidence at the DVRO hearing. But it goes on threatening, now name-calling somebody is a queefster. Uh, I think maybe that's the lawyer, not entirely sure about that. Uh, but once again, straight out blackmail, if you don't do what I want you to do, which in this case is uh, not share these communications with your attorney, uh, then I am going to show them private, embarrassing information about you, uh, pictures and video testimonies of your drug habit. Try me. Making it very clear this is, uh, this is fun for her. This is a dare that she is uh, issuing. This one here, then, we see some pity plays, oh, the manipulation, just tugging at the heartstrings here. I'm going to have so many costs, and it's going to be so terrible, and so therefore, if you do these things, I'm going to call all the tabloids. Hi, no going back. You think you have a bad reputation now. You think once it's over, I will stop talking. I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to spreading awareness of what you have done. The, the hint of uh, grandiosity in this one uh, is particularly juicy to me, as if anybody is going to care <laughs> what uh, Yohan did to her in her mind uh, in, you know, another year. It won't matter, let alone the rest of her life. Going back now again to threatening him with some purported evidence she claims to have, uh, now again specifically triangulating him against uh, his fellow co-workers uh, by suggesting he's implicated them in cocaine use, criminal activity. Boy, you should, you should warn them, but your decision to go to court. Oh. Third time now, we have explicit blackmail in writing. Not a good idea to be doing this type of thing. This close, mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> Look at this blame shifting. I mean, this is textbook abuser right here. This is your fault. You're making me do this. All these texts are caused by your decision to undertake this divorce with animosity and without speaking to me. He told you he's done with you. He moved out of your house and he filed for divorce. He has no obligation to talk to you. You can talk to his lawyer. That's probably what he told you. Finally, at the end of May, uh, apparently they have gone through a mediation in their divorce by this point. Alice, <laughs> this is from you on. You agreed in mediation that you would not contact me unless it was absolutely necessary regarding the children. He wants 
nothing to do with her. Shut up. Leave him alone. Go about your life. This is harassment and abuse. You are on notice. It must stop immediately. This is what you need to do. Very clear and direct boundary setting, reminding her of a previous obligation that she apparently voluntarily undertook, but cannot seem to live up to. And her response, of course, let's attack his manliness. Let's try to emasculate him by suggesting it's not that you're continuing to verbally harass and berate him with these ranting text messages. Uh, it's that he's not a man because he's dealing with them. Well, let's just make it a trifecta here then with some more blackmail. Let's just get it crystal clear down there for the fourth time that you're going to threaten to use cocaine use against him uh, if he doesn't go along with uh, how, how you want how you want things to be handled. This last one that I'm going to point out now is uh, the one that to me is potentially the most damaging in all of this. And it's because it goes back to that definition that we got of harassment, where remember, it's a course of conduct directed at a specific person that seriously alarms, annoys, or harasses the person and serves no legitimate purpose. So what is Alice doing here? Well, we're back on the blackmailing again. Your mom, your mom sucks. I'm going to triangulate you against her. She's terrible. I wouldn't have to be so mean to her if it weren't for you and this divorce that we're going through. P.S. These are not threats. I am not asking you for anything. This is what is going to happen. Do whatever you want to do. Do you see the difference? It's more like tormenting you than threatening you. I mean, from the horse's mouth, <laughs> this is illegitimate for the purpose of tormenting him. She is throwing this stuff in his face. This is probably one of the more damaging admissions that I have seen in all of this stuff because it's clear that she knows exactly what she's doing, but she is just going to persist in doing it and will not be told by Yoan, by Yoan's attorneys, uh, that it's not acceptable and she needs to change her behavior. So by the end of July 2021, Yoan has now had enough and he sends this message to Alice about five months, remember, now after the divorce has been filed. Uh, indicating that because she is not willing to abide by the agreements that they made about how these communication channels are to be used, uh, that he is going to take away that communication channel. He's going to block her text message and require her to communicate with him through Our Family Wizard. Now, Our Family Wizard is, uh, it's, it's a parenting app, a co-parenting app. Uh, the purpose of it is really to facilitate people who are going through highly emotionally charged situations like a divorce to still be able to communicate over things that are important to the children and to try to protect the children as much as possible from the damaging effects of conflict between the parents. So the Our Family Wizard app just has a bunch of different functions in it, like um, calendars and, uh, you know, e emails that uh, can, can be sent, messages that can be sent through the program. The reason why it's significant is for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the messages can't be deleted. You can't, you know, send something uh, gross and then go back and, and try to take it back. Uh, so it does specifically document the way that uh, communications are, are sent. But it also includes this feature called a tone meter because it's trying to facilitate civil communication, things that enable parents to get along and minimize conflict for the benefit of the children. It has this tone meter that tells you, you know, maybe you ought to cool it down a little bit with, with what you're saying on this one. Maybe, maybe this one might not be so appropriate, be a good opportunity to think about it before you hit send. 
So it does appear that for at least some time, this was effective. Uh, it wasn't until about November of 2021, which as you'll recall, is shortly after Alice finds out about Yoan's new relationship with Bianca Wallace, that Alice then begins taking steps to evade the block that he's put on her, her cell phone. So she can't send him abusive text messages anymore. Uh, and in November then of 2021, we start to see her using these other channels to continue her tirades uh, and insults and everything that we've kind of already seen up to this point. So I'm not going to share those because the content of them is just more of the same. It's really less significant uh, in my mind than just the fact that she is sending them at all, knowing you can't delete these. This is specifically a tool that's there to help preserve evidence for family disputes. And you're being warned through this app that these are things you probably shouldn't say. Uh, if Alice isn't going to be told by Yoan or Yoan's lawyer that she shouldn't say these things, she's certainly not going to be told by told that by some app. So she reverts to the patterns of communication that we already saw well established, but now is using uh, these documentary <laughs> preservation uh, tools uh, to, to continue to do that. So it really just, to me, demonstrates the impunity that she seems to believe she has, uh, the entitlement to be able to speak with, to him uh, when she wants to, and to say essentially whatever she wants without consequences. The July 2021 text seems to have been at least temporarily effective at getting Alice to stop engaging in the verbal abuse towards Yuan, but unfortunately it also kind of looks like it just sort of forced her to redirect it because now beginning in the end of July of that same month, Alice begins to send harassing emails to Yuan's mother. So there's a series of these as well. They contain many of the same communication patterns as we are used to seeing now from all of these text messages that she sent Yoan. Uh, they are full of blaming, anger, uh, disrespect, uh, threats, name calling. She calls her mother and e mother-in-law an evil bitch at one point. And essentially uses these text messages as an attempted triangulation to try to divide Yoan from his mother. I bring this up because the coercive control is certainly a component of this case. Uh, coercive control, as you'll remember from the last video, uh, fits within the definition of disturbing the peace of somebody who's asking for a DVRO. And so coercive control consists of things like trying to isolate a person from their close relationships. And we see this from Alice ad nauseum uh, with, like I said, pretty much everybody under the sun. But it really, the technique of it is really illustrated well in this particular message because it's July 31st, okay, nine days after Yoan blocks her and tells her we're not talking anymore, you can't handle it that she says to his mother, Yoan says, you are the reason he left me. Now, again, remember how Amber Heard used to do this? All these people are going to back me up. This person saw it. This person witnessed it, et cetera, et cetera. And then when push actually came to shove, none of them did. It's just something she made up. Well, I'm getting a lot of that flavor from this message here because we know Yoan didn't say shit to her <laughs> over the last week, uh, specifically doesn't want to talk to her. So Alice would have us believe that uh, notwithstanding this breakdown of communication that is almost a year old at this point, remember August 2020, he says he's done with this marriage. Uh, some point in here now, Yoan tells Alice that his mother is the reason that she left. Uh, why would, why would you say this? Well, you might say this to hurt the mother, 
but really it's because you're trying to set up a situation where he's now going to have to defend himself. He's going to have to respond and deny it or explain it or whatever, because that's what this is all about. It's about getting a reaction from Yuan, getting a reaction from his mother in order to maintain that control over who he gets to talk to about what she's going to monitor it. And if she doesn't like it, she's going to call it out and interfere with it. So from my perspective, really good example here of that type of coercive control tactic of triangulation. I told you guys there was a lot here and even not going over everything uh, piece by piece in fine detail, it's still a lot to get through. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. And in the next video, we're going to look at what Alice did that was targeting Bianca Wallace. Why did Bianca Wallace get named as a protected party in this DVRO? We're then going to look at what happened in February of 2022 that precipitated Yoan making this request for the domestic violence restraining order in the first place. And then finally, after the temporary order was issued in February of 2022, Yoan filed a supplemental request based on conduct that Alice engaged in after that TRO was initially uh, signed and filed. So still a lot more to cover, folks. It just goes on. Uh, I hope you will continue to share my interest in this case. And if you do, then please stick around and I will see you in the next one.